welcome back to another vlog that is very random. I just feel like vlogging. I just feel like doing something more casual versus a sit down video. Plus there's like so much I wanna share, like blobbity bloop, like all in one. I feel like vlogs are like the easiest way of doing that. It is Friday, August 20th. I just did six miles on the treadmill. I just showered, got into some fresh and clean loungewear. I love that feeling. It just feels so good. Today was like the day to wash my hair. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys how I make my coffee, which I've done this in another vlog, but just in case you've missed it, this is a to-go cup. I've talked about this before. My coffee just tastes better in to-go cups. I think ever since pregnancy, I can literally still taste like dish soap in mugs. I don't care how clean they are. I don't care if they're brand new and dish soap has never even touched them, which I hope you wash your mugs before you use them, but you know what I mean? Ever since pregnancy, that it just, it's just so weird. I still use them obviously, but every now and then I like to treat myself to to-go cups, okay? So I have my black coffee in here. I just brewed the Dunkin' Donuts French vanilla. I did Instacart yesterday and they did not have my favorite Dolce de Leche cookie, Dunkin' Donuts coffee on there. So that's what it is. The French vanilla is pretty good too. Anyways, this is the key to my black coffee, not tasting so gross. This is a sugar-free vanilla syrup. My favorite is the sugar-free salted caramel, but that I feel like you kind of have to have a plain coffee or a cinnamon type of coffee. That combination is really good. Maybe even the vanilla might be okay but the vanilla is probably my least favorite. First favorite's the sugar-free salted caramel. Second is just sugar-free caramel. Third is vanilla. This is very basic, but it does help a lot in terms of drinking black coffee. And yes, I could put creamer in it, stuff like that, but I just feel like it's a little bit less calories. Calories can add up so quickly with coffee, especially being that I'm a big coffee drinker. So my iced coffees in the middle of the day are the coffees I choose to chachi up with some, I don't know, calories. And I will show you how I make that later today. So I wanted to share with you guys an exciting purchase that's coming today. Share with you guys an update on why I no longer have my little mini Chanel bag. Sorry, I didn't even tell you guys what I just did. I just put Truvia, two Truvias, a splash of that sugar-free stuff. Um, yeah, I wanted to share with you guys why I no longer have that little Chanel bag. Share with you guys a few things that I've picked up. What else? Maybe outfits, what I'm eating. I don't know if it's gonna be just a day vlog, two day vlog, week vlog, who knows? So I hope you guys like this vloggy vlog and I'm gonna go mix this up and start drinking it. Okay, my clothis is a mess, but I thought I'd share with you guys my outfit of the day and then also some pieces that I picked up over the past like three and a half weeks okay so this outfit is new so this is part of the pickups i got this a few weeks ago and i got this shirt in white as well it's just a basic from h&m it was like 5.99 something really inexpensive but for the fall time i don't know what it is but i love getting crisp new t-shirts to just tuck into jeans and or just wear them out or a front tuck with leggings leather jacket thrown over their shoulders shackets now because we stand shackets for seasons already denim jackets leather jackets all of that it's just a very good easy layering piece and super timeless and i don't get sick of them and i can wear them constantly so i got that from h&m got these jeans from zara these are the super high rise straight leg full length pant i've already trimmed them like a few inches we know we always have to trim so our jeans are meant for like someone that's like seven feet. I'm not even kidding you. And then what else am I wearing? My Zara leather slides. You guys love these. Also, I got this sent from Amazon. Just a Cartier dupe, obviously. And my little vintage watch from my sister-in-law. So that is a look of the day. I actually put on makeup because we did not want to scare you guys any further into this vlog. Now let me get into the haul portion, I guess. Okay. And then a couple other pairs of pants that I picked up recently. I'm gonna pop a picture of these on. I am so in love. This is gonna be the closest, I think, for me to, you know, fitting in a 501. These are the Levi's dad jeans, always, always out of stock. You have to stock Urban Outfitters website to get these, but they are a little bit wider in the leg versus like the original 501 fit, but I feel like this is something I can get tapered when I start getting sick of it because the fit is just so good. The denim is so soft. The wash is amazing. And 
they basically feel like pajamas. I don't even know how to explain it. They're super comfortable. If you do get them altered to be more straight leg, they probably won't be as comfortable. Not gonna be as much movement in the leg. The one con about these is that they didn't use buttons. I feel like if they used buttons, it would have been a little bit more authentic, but that's just me being super picky. I got these in a 28, should have gotten them in a 27. They do run a little bit bigger than the black ones. I had the black ones in a 28 and those are already a little loose. But for some reason, Levi's are super inconsistent. I should have read the reviews better on this color, um, but they're very, very comfortable. I can always get the waist snatched at the alteration place if I need to, but for now, they're just my comfy everyday jeans. And then I got the coveted Melina faux leather pants from Aritzia. Finally got my hands on these. These are a size six. They're the super high rise, so not the regular high rise. And I know they do a low rise as well. And I got them in the length tall. I do need to get these altered, but I was planning on wearing these on Saturday for our anniversary dinner with heels so i think i'm gonna wait until after i wear heels to get them altered to wear them with like boots and sneakers and stuff like that but really really love these super soft and comfortable and i got true to size six some people say to size up but i feel like they're gonna stretch out so love okay cleo is up from her nap anyways this is an Elton John oversized one size shirt from Urban. I had to get it. Cleo's song for us is Tiny Dancer. Okay, she's making a mess. This is why I can't keep my office clean. But anyways, her song is Tiny Dancer. That was the first song that came on the radio when we took her home from the hospital. It also reminds me of my dad. And actually the same song Tiny Dancer played when we brought her to her first checkup appointment. And we got back in the car on the way home from the hospital. It came back on. So it was just a sign and I love Elton John's. So I thought that that was a fun little addition to my graphic tee collection. Just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, the mess. I usually don't get her dressed for the day until after lunchtime because she naps before lunchtime and she makes a mess at lunchtime. So <laughs> yeah, she's mix matched because we had a little accident last night. So we're actually gonna have to swap out a lot of my summer pieces put them away and put my fall pieces out on this seasonal rack. But this I think is gonna be on repeat. This is kind of the same situation as my white linen button down, but this is from Cotton On. It's really oversized, that's why I got the extra small. They have it in dark brown too. I kinda want the dark brown. This is gonna look really cute, maybe half button tied up with the Aritzia pants for our date night tomorrow night. I need to hit this with the steamer, but this is one of those come through pieces I'm gonna wear a million different ways, I already know it. So super happy I got my hands on that. This is one of those annoying things to share with you guys because I don't think I'm gonna be able to find a link, but I got this from Marshalls randomly. I was looking at like the home stuff, getting like candles and looking at like their Halloween stuff kind of early, but super cute. Gave into the little vest trend, I just love it. I am a sucker for this pattern. So I picked these up from Zara and I got them in a 38, which is their seven and a half. Their sizing is off, but I'm usually a 38. It should be a USA European 38 fits me fine. I'm a true eight. Sorry if you can hear Cleo screaming, but I thought they matched my cute little Kelly dupe so well. Obviously this is like a take on the Hermes sandal, but I love that they made it very unique with like the little chain detailing and obviously will match my monogram pieces you know, from Louis really, really well. So good transitional color into fall. And these were sold out for a very long time. Very happy. And they're real leather. So very happy with these. I'm so sad. This avocado was not ripe. I had to literally saw it open. That's the one thing that sucks about Instacart. You're not the one, you know, picking out your produce. Ugh, I'm so mad. But anyways, I was going to have a half of an avocado with my two scrambled eggs and a cutie. That was gonna be my lunch, but let's imagine there's cut up avocado here. I'm gonna get my cutie out of the fridge. Who else makes a mess when they cook? Anyways, bummer. Okay, so I thought I'd share with you guys a few of my favorite snacks to keep in the house. These two things are from Costco. I'm gonna open these now and eat them now because that lunch was not enough. Um, this is my favorite flavor from this brand, but I do know that they carry like store brand versions of the grain-free chips at Sprouts, but I love these. And these we found at Costco the other day, and I've really been liking them to throw on salads, just snack on them. Cleo likes them. You can make them hot. You can not. You can make little like chicken salad, you know, like with mayo, mustard, celery, pickles, whatever you want to add. It's just a really good thing to have in the house. 
And then you guys know about these, my little nut packs that I like to keep in my bag or just snack on, you know, in the middle of the day. I grabbed these from Target. This was another Costco find. This came in a pack of three flavors, the, the mango, chocolate, and strawberry. Strawberry is my favorite, but they are coconut based, dairy free. They don't hurt my stomach. They're not grain free, but they're gluten free because, you know, the mochi is made out of rice but super, super good. So I'm gonna have this right now, this in a little bit, and this in a little bit. <laughs> okay, time for my midday iced coffee. This is my favorite iced coffee at the moment from the store. I just fill up, you know, maybe a cup and a half with some ice. I use the unsweetened almond milk from the brand Silk, the vanilla, and a splash of this guy. And that's it super easy so i came downstairs to show you guys how pretty my flowers were from that from two days ago but what happened i just noticed this right now Ugh, that's annoying all the other ones look really pretty though so i have to rearrange this and take this guy out so while i wait for fedex to come with my exciting package i thought i would tell you a sad story so it's like a two-part it's sad and then happy hopefully fedex comes who knows if they even come today it says it will anyways i thought i would share with you guys why i no longer have my little top handle chanel bag i mentioned in one of my last favorite videos that i was having issues with it i'm just gonna cut right to the point but basically i had ignored a red flag from when i first opened the bag to me, kind of, I had like a gut instinct feeling that this bag was overlooked during like the quality control portion of its coming to life. Is that what it would be called? I think my bag was overlooked. And on top of the fact it was a seasonal bag and not a classic flap, which by the way, classic flaps can be overlooked too. And there's a lot of quality control issues with classic flaps nowadays as well. But when I had first opened the bag, I'm gonna try to insert pictures too, so you guys can see. It's really hard to see in pictures from what I, have in my phone but when I had first opened the bag there was an indentation on the bottom of the bag in the leather I this was my choice and it's kind of my fault but I decided to overlook that thinking that it was something that would just be pushed down with stuff in it which it did but that it would eventually work its way out and no longer be there even without stuff in it I didn't really give it a fair chance for that to happen because obviously I only owned it for a few months or five months. I really only wore it four times. So I didn't give it a fair chance with that, but that should have been my first indication of letting my essay know and being worried about other quality issues in the bag. Now, I overlooked it, was so excited to have it. It was hard to hunt down and I just really wanted to use it and it was on the bottom of the bag. So I was just like, you know what? No, I'm just gonna give this bag a chance. I think everything else will be fine. And I don't want anybody else that had purchased this bag after I've done this video to think that theirs automatically has an issue. I really I really do think mine was an issue. So many of you guys have sent me pictures of you guys wearing it, you guys love it, you guys are having no problem with it and have worn it more than I even had a chance to wear my bag. I don't really do much. My lifestyle is extremely casual, but I didn't really give it a chance. It was a bag that I thought I was gonna have in my collection forever. So anyways, don't think your bag has, a, has an issue. This was just mine. And I really should have said something to her immediately because while there was still supply in the company, she could have just looked for a new one and examined it and let me know that that one was okay. But anyways, decided to ignore it. And after four wears, which was two months into me owning the bag, four wears, two times of which were just for Instagram pictures, okay? so two other times, I wore it for maybe an hour. I noticed popped stitches in more than one place on the chain strap and I freaked out, sent pictures to my essay. She actually ignored me, so that was sad. But I decided to go around you know, the boutique and just contact the 1-800 number immediately. They said that they could send the bag out for evaluation and maybe determine if it could get you know, fixed. For me, in my head, I would have thought they would immediately told me oh, this is something that's fixable. I mean, you only own the bag for two months at that point when I called. So I was really upset with that. The customer service was just like kind of whatever. I think I just set the bar so high for luxury customer service after Louis Vuitton's experience during the summer. Last year when I had my Palm Springs backpack replaced from the peeling on the canvas, I mean, they gave me a brand new bag right there, right then, no questions asked after me owning the bag for over five years. It was just such an amazing experience. So obviously I had you know, the idea of maybe possibly of them replacing it, but whatever. So I considered the fact that I can get it sent out to France and, you know, get it fixed. I sat on it for a few months and then I just sort of realized, no, wait, 
let me try to get my money back for this bag and rebuy it so that I can just have a brand new one and hopefully not have any issues with the bag. Sorry, this is like really bothering me, my little fuzz in my hair. So I sent pictures out to Fashion File and I'm shocked, but I did make a little bit of money on that bag. Not a ton. I made like gas money above what I paid for the bag. So I got all my money back basically, plus like $50, $60, I don't know. And to me, that was like a, something I felt like I had to jump on, but I still didn't. I still waited a few weeks. I actually just sent it out the other day. So this new bag coming is something that I purchased prior to me even letting go of this bag. And it's not one to replace another. The new bag coming is just something that was on my wish list. And it's to me, a completely different bag, but still a Chanel. And I just felt like it was sort of like me returning the bag because I knew Chanel wasn't going to give me my money back. But if I was able to make my money back from Fashion File, I, I, I told myself I would have been okay with losing $100 or $2 to you know repurchase it and have a better version. But I obviously made more. This is why they have such a huge markup on this bag. It has a really big overhead and you do pay a premium for this one because I do think it's sought after and a bag that was overlooked and now people are starting to realize it's it exists and it just ticks so many boxes of like a perfect mini bag. And I will say that over and over again, there were a few things about the bag that became cons for me that I actually thought were pros in the beginning, like the chain being thin. You know, when I look back at pictures, I don't know if I really like the thin chain on me, on my stature, I'm not a very petite person. I probably would have preferred a chunkier chain or at least the size of the rectangular mini chain. But overall, obviously the design of it being on that bag, for me, I feel like it wouldn't have looked good in a thicker chain. So it's just tiny little excuses for that. And the fact that it was so lightweight, like, I mean, it was lighter. I think it probably weighs the same as my Nano Speedy from Louis, and that's a canvas bag. I kind of want to feel like I'm wearing like a Chanel bag or some sort of girth, which it's a pro because then you don't have so much extra weight when you're adding things to the bag. But at the end of the day, my Saint Laurent Toy Lulu felt like it was better quality. And so there was just a little, like little things that added up, but those little things were not enough for me to all of a sudden not like the bag. I mean, the bag has way more pros than it did cons, but I felt like, okay, I can get my money back and repurchase the bag and after a few days of thinking about it, I really don't even know if I want to repurchase the bag. If I would have sent it out to France and got it back, I would have been scared to use it. I would have been scared of it happening again, even though I'm sure they would have done a great job. I'm not saying they wouldn't have done a good job, but I would have been scared. That's just me. And if I were to repurchase a bag, I think I'd be scared to use it, even if it's perfect, no flaws, and that would never happen. I just, it would be my luck that it would just happen again. You know what I mean? So. I have decided to use the funds from that bag to save for, you know, some sort of mini Chanel, probably vintage, preferably caviar with the 24 karat gold plating. I just feel like if I'm going to spend the money on, you know, gold hardware Chanel bag, I want it to be vintage. I want it to have the, I want it to have the 24 karat plating and my heart is really with vintage Chanel bags. I feel like those are the ones that I just like sort of melt for. So that kind of will tell you a sneak of what I didn't end up getting and what is coming today. So I'll discuss the rest with you when the other bag comes and I do the reveal. Hopefully it'll come soon. I keep looking at the door waiting. But anyways, that's my story with that bag. I'm really sad and I don't want anybody that purchased this bag to think that they all of a sudden have issues. If those popped stitches weren't there, this bag I would have seen being in my collection forever. It just ticked so many boxes. I'm really upset, man. But what can you do? Okay, a couple hours passed by after I filmed that little story time. And of course the package arrived. I have the box down here. I opened it, sorry, not a true unboxing. It came in its original packaging. It actually came, because I got it from the eBay authenticity program, authenticity guaranteed program. It came in its little eBay dust bag. It came with this guy attached to it, which is really cool. And inside here, you can tap the card to your NFC enabled phones to view your authentication details. Here's to your new handbag. So you have that, which is really, really cool. And it shows the brand and the model on here. It came with everything, by the way. This bag is from 2006, I think. It says, congratulations on your purchase. So cute. So I'm going to keep this sort of stuff in the original box with the dust bag also had this ebay tag on it i put my stuff in it already okay took all the tags off i cannot believe 
I have this bag in my possession. I'm so excited. <sighs> I did have to sell quite a few bags, not quite a few, I think two bags to fund this and it was worth it. So here is my new to me, uh, small classic flap in black caviar with silver hardware. And there's very minor wear on this, but the beauty of this is that it's caviar and you can really see how well it's held up. It's still very puffy and, oh my God, so beautiful. So I ended up going for a bag with silver hardware again. And you're probably like, don't you have a rectangular mini that's very similar? Yes, but at the same time, a rectangular mini, I feel like I've said this multiple times on my channel, a rectangular mini to me isn't really a classic flap. And that's why sometimes I prefer the look of a square mini. And I love my rectangular mini sometimes, but that is a bag I actually, that's like one of the only bags that my Palm Springs mini are like one of the only bags that I have in my collection that I am keeping, even though despite the love isn't really there. Um, just for pretty much investment purposes, it's going for a lot right now. And I feel like that's something I'd want, I'd want Cleo to decide if she wants that in the future or not. And for me, I'm, my heart is just with the small classic flap. I've said this for so long that I really prefer bags with four grommets in terms of flap bags like this. And I know it's not that much bigger than the rectangular mini, but because it is bigger than like a square mini or bigger than the bag that I recently had let go of, silver hardware is just easier for me to wear. It's really effortless, cool, edgy, modern, and not so serious, if that makes sense. If I end up loving this size so, so, so much, then maybe in the future I'll invest in another one, but with the gold vintage hardware. I feel like it looks bigger on camera, but it's pretty small. I should get my rectangular mini down so you guys could see the difference, but I'm really lazy. It's not that much bigger. Actually holds pretty much the same, but it's a classic flap, you guys. It's a small classic flap. I'm so excited. It has the double flap, and I really, really wanted one with the black interior. So you can see there's some wear to it but it's still in beautiful condition. I already have my stuff in it. I am going to order a bag organizer for this, which would be my first bag organizer, but this is definitely a bag that I want to invest in keeping its shape. And I loved the whole authenticity guarantee program from eBay because it's kind of like Vestiaire Collective. Purchase from the seller, they ship it off to an authenticator, and then the authenticator authenticates it. You get your little certification, and then they ship it back to you. It just makes you feel more confident with your purchase. Me, being as crazy as I am, I obviously sent these pictures out to another third-party authenticator just to have that double sort of confidence in purchasing this. This was an expensive bag, and I feel like unless I'm getting it from the boutique or fashion file, that's something I wouldn't do even though eBay obviously guarantees the authentication. I am so shook, you guys. So for silver, it's just funny. Even with my denim flap, even with, I don't know. I feel like I would have still owned my jumbo if I had it in silver. There's something about a silver classic, silver hardware on a classic flap that just makes it so much easier and less serious for me to wear. It just suits my lifestyle so much more. Obviously, you can wear this dressy and obviously you can wear it casual with like a street wear vibe. I feel like street wear vibe, this just goes better. That's just my opinion. But I do have a feeling this size is just going to be something that I am going to love the best and I'm going to want in gold hardware. Maybe not even in black. Maybe I'll get it in like a dark beige with gold hardware one day. That's like a unicorn, okay? But it has to be caviar. It has to be caviar. That is like number one for me. Wow. I cannot believe I own a small classic flap. I don't know if you guys remember years ago, I don't know if I unboxed it or if I just talked about my situation. I ordered a small classic flap from Luxury Garage Sale. It was vintage gold hardware, the 24 karat plating. That's the only way I'd spend that kind of money. It has to be the vintage 24 karat gold plating. And when I got it in the inside here, basically it was completely detached for, I don't know, I don't know if it went through like a buzz saw or something, but it was like detached and that was not mentioned in the photos. Obviously they gave me back my money and no wonder that bag was only, I think it was only like $1,700 at that point. Okay. So that's like a fifth of what this bag costs now. And I just really think I'm going to enjoy this size the most. So, so cute on the shoulder doubled up. And I was worried because all these unboxings that I'm seeing of the new ones, I don't know if it's because it's new and it has to break in, but 
all these unboxings of the new classic flaps people are having to like open their flap in order to change the chain listen to this so easy no like fuss it just does it i don't know if this is because it's older i have no idea that was something i was a little worried about that was what i loved about the gucci marmont you just go in and out and look so easy so to me that would have been a huge hassle because i like to switch it up like if i'm wearing it like this for the day it doesn't mean i'm only gonna wear it like this for the day like and i have a toddler that i'm running after like i don't want to have to open my bag in order to change the strap length does that make sense so very easy and i'm five seven i'm gonna show you how cool it looks crossbody I don't know if the date that this bag was made changes the length in the strap, but this hits like perfect. 5'7", perfectly here. It's even like a little bit lower than I thought it was going to be, which I would have been okay with it even higher because I like that sort of bum bag, like short front bag vibe. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is a total dream bag now i don't want to say i don't even want to call this holy grail bag because i feel like that's going to jinx it anytime i call a bag a holy grail bag or i put a bag so high up on a pedestal it always ends up disappointing me so right now this is just a really big bag checked off my wish list i don't know if in the future i'd even purchase another one just because of the price points of chanel it's like when is it going to end when is it going to stop it would definitely have to be I don't know. I have no idea what the circumstances would have to be in order for me to do that. But right now, I feel happy with other brands of small black bags with gold hardware, if that makes sense. Like, I'm happy with my Toy Lulu. I don't really need another bag with black and gold hardware. And in terms of this exact sort of silhouette and vibe of a bag, it's just easier for me to wear with silver hardware or the so black. But that is like finding a needle in a haystack. So I am very very happy yay i think i'm gonna wear this tomorrow night on our anniversary dinner date i'm so proud that i actually am sharing with you a full day of food yeah baby bunny so excuse the paper plate all my dishes are dirty but i just air fried some broccoli as per usual that's like something i do constantly this is a very easy dinner this is just rotisserie chicken i do this about twice a week it makes great like sandwiches or chicken salads you know a couple days after and then I did a side salad. It's literally just lettuce, some tomatoes, onions, and a tiny bit of shredded cheese with Italian dressing. The cheese may or may not hurt my stomach later, but we will see. This is just my fast go-to when I'm really busy type of dinner, so yum. Hi right, guys, I'm trying to figure out if I like my hair or not. It's Saturday, it's date night for our anniversary dinner. Oh, I hope these fall out soon. Yeah, I already brushed them. I don't know why they're staying in so much. When I do my blow dry with that tool that I am obsessed with, you guys know what I'm talking about, the Revlon blow dryer. If I do not use a straightener after to make it like stick straight, my curls really hold and last. So I don't know, hopefully it'll fall. We're not leaving for a few more hours, but I wanted to show you guys a really good cereal slash snack that I found at Target. It's called the Catalina Crunch. It says keto, I could care less if it says keto or not, but it's grain free, zero sugar, nine grams of protein and, oh no, sorry, 11 grams of protein, nine grams of fiber. So good, I'm snacking on that right now while I'm drinking my iced coffee. Earlier today I had two eggs and what's so annoying is that I cut into an avocado thinking it was gonna be beautiful, I even posted on my story, I'm just too lazy to like, give an avocado update, but I went to cut into it, like to make it little cubes to put on top of my eggs and it was rock hard. So that was a fail, really annoyed about that. And I made my iced coffee in this cup. I actually just got an ice water from Target, Starbucks at Target, saved that cup and just did my iced coffee in it. Anyways, so later I'm gonna do my makeup and then also share with you guys my outfit, which, it was nothing that I thought it was going to be, but it's all good. We have days like that. And this angle's really unflattering. So I'll see you guys later. Okay, I needed to document how good I did my makeup. Wow, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but 
toot toot. I did faux lashes just on the ends and I think it looks really good. I don't have any lip color on right now because I don't want to put that on until we go and get in the car. And I'll share with you guys my outfit before we leave. Hi guys, it is now Monday. I'm so sorry, once again, I did not share my outfit with you guys once I got dressed for Saturday night, but I wore my Aritzia pants, an old lace blouse, my H&M blazer, new Chanel bag, my Jeffrey Campbell heels, and I really loved my makeup. I was so excited about it. Yeah, it was just such a nice night. And you know, I feel like this weekend was a good example of how I could kind of go off track with my eating habits. And I definitely ate gluten at the sushi restaurant. The beauty of a sushi restaurant though is I feel like it's mostly gluten-free and you could totally go grain-free and get rolls without rice. I was just like in the mood to just do it all. <laughs> so I definitely treated myself and I'm paying for it today. I actually didn't start feeling pain in my stomach until, which, you know, I also did really not great yesterday. Again, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. I was very hungover yesterday, so. I just sort of allowed myself to eat what I needed to eat, what I felt like eating. Kind of like when I'm really tired and hungover, I just, I crave carbs. I was gluten-free for the most part until dinner yesterday, which we tried a really yummy dinner that we never tried from Trader Joe's. It was good, but in the middle of the night, in this morning, I mean, I look seven months pregnant. The gluten, just wow. I mean, you could just see it. So I'm in a lot of pain today, so. But I still pushed through. Woke up early this morning to get my six miles in on the treadmill. And that felt really good. Right now I'm taking Cleo for a walk because she just seemed a little fussy this morning. And it's a beautiful outside. It's only 72. So it wasn't too hot. Probably gonna do about three miles. So today we're getting in nine miles. So that's good. But anyways, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here before I forget to actually do like an ending. So I hope you guys liked this little weekend vlog and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, bye.